Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to the car lot. As you can see, I am here, and I'm back from my trip from Pennsylvania, and it's good to be back on the lot. Granted, it is Sunday. I'm here. There's no one else around. We're going to do a couple things in this video. The first thing is, is we're going to check Grandma over, make sure that everything fared really good on the trip, especially an oil change. She's due for an oil change. We'll get that done. We're also going to take a quick look right now at the lot to see what's new, what's changed, what's gone, what did Bill do while I was gone on vacation, so stay tuned. First thing I notice when I come out to the lot is the, that we have an empty space in our back lineup here. When I go through and try and figure out which vehicle is missing, I see that the 2016 Nissan Rogue is gone. Nissan Rogue, not Nissan, not Nissan, whatever you guys call it down there in the PA, I don't know. And we do have a couple of new vehicles on the lot. I see a 2012. Ford Fiesta, that looks like an SES model, got some new tires, real sporty looking. And if you guys go back to a couple of videos where I bought this vehicle and it had a few extra dents on it, you'll see that the dents are now fixed. At least this one is on this side. And of course this side's not in the sun, but this has all been fixed as well. And if you are wondering how we made out on the arbitration, well, they came good for $1,000 of the 1,500 that I asked for. So we paid the extra five and got it fixed right. And as we come over here, you'll see that we've got a uh, new 20, new, it's not new, it's a 2013 Dodge Avenger, and uh, we've got 93.95 on this thing for a price. It's a SXT model, it looks like, with the aluminum wheels and such, and it should be fairly good kilometers. I believe this one has like 118 or something like that. And as we come out back, we notice that we have a really nice looking 2010 Hyundai Elantra. This thing only has 130 thousand kilometers that's going to make somebody a really good economical vehicle so we are going to be doing a couple of different things in this video like i said i gave you the lot update we're also going to do an oil change on old grandma check it over make sure everything fared good from the trip as well as tearing apart the motor from junior's 2013 hyundai veloster turbo to find out what caused it to explode so here it sits and we'll be getting to that in just a few minutes but for now we're going to get grandma up in the air and change the oil. So as we're letting the uh, oil drain out here, I do want to point out just how clear or transparent that oil still is after 5,000 kilometers in this car. That says a lot to me about the way this thing was taken care of by the previous owner. Anyways, as far as the overall condition of the vehicle, I went around, checked the front end, uh, checked all the brakes. Everything still seems tight. Uh, no squeaks. There's a little bit of a rattle, I think, on the passenger side. I think it might be a stabilizer link. Uh, nothing too serious, but man, those roads in Pennsylvania, I was bound to have something happen. Anyways, if that's the least of our worries during that whole trip, then I think we are doing pretty good. Also, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will know that I put up a post the other day about the next mod for old grandma. I left a challenge for you guys to guess what it is, and you guys have been guessing, and no one has come even close to it yet. So if you guys think you know what the next mod is for old grandma, leave it in the comment section below. So now comes a part in the video where we're going to start tearing down the engine on junior's 2013 hyundai veloster so in the process of doing this i'm not going to go step by step on how to tear this down i'm just going to put the time lapse on we're going to get the head off and then we'll start talking about the motor in the meantime like i said in previous videos we will be taking all the sensors off setting them aside and getting them bagged and tagged so that we have spares for down the road so cue the music and let's get this done So guys, we are so close to getting the head off of this motor. As you can hear, the air compressor has just shut off. These head bolts are in, 
and either my guns aren't powerful enough, I don't know what the deal is, but I've got to wait till the air kind of pumps itself back up again and I can get one bolt out and then I got to wait for the air one more time. So I've got uh, three of them out. We're working on the fourth one. We've got a few more to go and then we should have this thing off here in no time. And I'm hoping that all this exhaust and that fuel rail in the front will just kind of come off with it. And all we're going to do is when we get it off is just take it out, flip it over and take a look at the damage. Now that the compressor is shut off one more time, time to get this bolt out. Ooh, I actually got two that time. And here I am. Okay, folks, the head is ready to come off. I just give it a snap with the hammer there and it loosened up. So we're gonna get this camera mounted and then we'll flip it over and see what kind of destruction we have on the underside. Alrighty, are you ready for this? Well, on the side of the head, I don't see any damage. Quite honestly, all the valves look good. This is cylinder number four, and uh, I expected to see this all beat to pieces. Anyways, let's get the head out of the way and take a look at what's left of the piston. I can hear parts dropping out of this thing. All right, let's do that. So there's the head gasket. There's what's left of the piston. Of course, down in there, it's just a couple of washers from the head bolts. That's nothing serious. The walls look good in the rest of them. So we did manage to get the base pan off and the uh, piston, or what's left of the piston, out of the cylinder wall. And uh, one thing that you'll notice, maybe you can see it on camera or not, is just how much metal grit there is in that pan. Some of it is there just from res residual stuff kind of falling down into the base, but uh, a lot of it is really fine stuff, stuff that got ground up really, really good. So we're about ready to take the caps off the uh, connecting rods and then get the crank out and see if we can determine what, uh, what happened to this engine. The bearings look good there. in there. And there. Of course we can't get that one off until we get the crank out, so let's get those bolts off. Ah! You know, the old strong bar give them things a crack. And at this point, I'm really not too concerned about ruining anything, so don't go off on me in the comments for hitting these things with a hammer. Now that bearing looks really good. So does that one. Keep in mind guys, this engine had 200,000 kilometers on it too. Once the bearing fell out of that one. Probably for me hitting it, but it still looks good. It looks like brand new. This one here may have received some damage because it's trying to hold in at number four. It's 
That's not bad either. A little nick in it there, maybe from something catch on the side, but the inside looks good. And even that rear one looks uh, looks like it's in good shape. Well, I don't see any signs of overheating or heat, such as, you know, over revving or what have you. So let's get the crank out, see what the uh, rest of the uh, journals look like. Now that is some destruction, folks. We got chunks of aluminum all over all four cylinders. But it's all as a result of tearing this one apart. Does not want to fit on there very good at all. Ding! Well, besides blowing my uh, glove all to pieces and cutting my finger. So we've got that one out. And judging from what I'm seeing, I half expected it to be quite blue with, uh, you know, from heat and whatnot, and that is not the case. So my guess is something just let go. So I think maybe Junior's a little bit off the hook, but he didn't deny doing what he says he did. So anyways, I'm gonna go get cleaned up and we'll come back and finish out this video. So this is what's left of the connecting rod on cylinder number four. And yeah, there's a little bit of wear on that. But if you look at the other three, it's really no different. This is typical of a vehicle with 200,000 kilometers. But again, there's no charring or bluing of the bearing. I don't think it's been over revved. And looking at the bearings in the, uh, in the crank journals here, I don't see anything out of the ordinary there either. I think, and even from what I've read online, that these turbo motors just cannot handle the turbo for too long. It's always cylinder number four that destroys it. So guys, as you can see, I've got quite a mess to clean up here. So we are gonna close this video out. Thank you for sticking around and talking about the engine and what we found. We didn't find any huge surprises, which is actually kind of disappointing. I was hoping we would see some actual evidence of something. Not that I'm trying to nail down Junior by no means, but at the very end of the day, it's always good to be able to find something and know exactly what happened. In this case here, I can't determine exactly. If you guys think you know, leave your comments down in the comments section down below. Also guys, if you don't know what Project Bubbles is, that is the 2009 Kia Sportage that is behind me. Last winter or last fall, we put a lift kit on it. We put 31 inch tires and we razzed the crap out of it. My challenge to my viewers at the time was if I can get to 2000 subscribers, we are going to blow up, literally blow up Project Bubbles. And since this last little trip down to Pennsylvania, my subscriber count has been growing pretty steadily. We're getting pretty close to 2,000. We're at 16, 20 something as we sit here right now. So guys, I need you to help spread the word of Old Car Auto Guy, and then we're gonna be blowing up Project Bubbles and posting that video. I need your help. Also guys, don't forget Last Fit Auto Lighting is a sponsor of Old Grandma here with headlights, backup lights, and license plate light. If you wanna try them out, you can get your very own at lastfit.com. I'll put the link right here. And if you use the promo code OLDCARAUTOGUY10, you'll get 10% off your order. Also, as always, a continual sponsor of this channel is Sussex Beard Oil. They sponsor this beard. You can get all your bearded products at sussexbeard.com. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.